Electrophoresis is the movement of charged particles through an electrical field. Since the sugar phosphate backbone of DNA has a negative charge, electrophoresis can be used to pull DNA through an electrical field towards the positive electrode of a circuit. Molecular biologists have exploited this behavior to develop techniques that separate, clean, and analyze DNA fragments. There are an enormous number of variations of gel electrophoresis, including SDS page, DNA sequencing, 2D gel electrophoresis, DGGE, and many, many others. The details of each of these techniques differ, but they all exploit the fact that charged particles such as DNA migrate when placed in an electrical field, and that the direction of migration depends on the charge in the particle. At the heart of the technique is the gel. It is a matrix that contains pores through which the DNA is drawn when an electrical current is applied. Without a gel, all of the DNA would go right to the positive electrode, called the cathode. The size of the pores control the rate at which the DNA moves. Smaller pores means slower movement. The length of DNA fragments also influence the rate at which they are pulled through the gel, with longer fragments moving more slowly. A number of different matrices are used for gel electrophoresis. Agarose is one of the most common. Agarose gels are non-toxic, relatively inexpensive, and easy to prepare. The higher the concentration of agarose in the gel, the smaller the pores. A relatively high concentration of 1% agarose is used to separate small DNA fragments, while lower concentrations are used for separating larger fragments. For more exacting work, or for the separation of even larger molecules, polyacrylamide can be used. Polyacrylamide provides higher resolution relative to agarose and can be used in a larger variety of conditions, but has the drawback of being toxic. Wells are small indentations created in the gel when it is made. These wells are uniformly spaced along the side of the gel that is closest to the negative electrode. The even, linear spacing of wells provides a uniform starting position for the samples. The wells also allow the sample to be placed into the gel so that when the current is applied, the samples are pulled through the middle of the gel, not across the top. A solution is used to carry the electrical current through the gel and help maintain a constant environment during the run. The solution is called a running buffer. The buffering is needed to ma maintain a constant pH and provide ions in the solution to facilitate the flow of electricity. Heat is generated by the application of a current to the gel, and the running buffer also helps keep the gel cool. This is especially important for agarose gels because they melt if they get too hot. A gel box is the container that holds the gel submerged in running buffer. It is designed so that when current is applied through the attached electrodes, the current flows through the gel, creating the electrical field needed to push the negatively charged DNA molecule towards the positive electrode. The force needed to draw the DNA through the gel is provided by electricity. A power supply takes the standard AC electricity available from a wall outlet and converts it into the one-way DC current needed to set up an electrical field across the gel. Power supplies also provide a mechanism to control the amperage and voltage of the field. The lower the voltage, the slower the DNA migrates. Given enough time, all of the DNA in a sample will eventually run to the end of the gel and out into the surrounding buffer. This makes the amount of time the current is applied an important parameter. Most power supplies have a timer to turn the power off after a predetermined interval. A variety of different materials are analyzed with gel-based electrophoresis techniques, with linear strands of double-stranded DNA being very common. With this type of sample, the primary factor influencing migration is the length of the individual DNA strands in the sample. Other types of materials that are commonly run on gels are DNA plasmids, RNA, and proteins. Loading dye is a colored buffer mixed with the DNA prior to loading it onto the gel. The loading dye contains a relatively high concentration of either glycerol or sucrose. This makes the solution more dense than the surrounding running buffer, so then when a sample is pipetted over top of the well, it sinks down into the well. It also contains a small amount of dye. Coloring the sample provides quick confirmation that the samples have sunk into the wells and makes it easy to keep track of which wells have already been loaded. At the pH range in which the gels are buffered, many dyes have a negative charge so that they migrate in the same direction as the DNA. This has the additional benefit of providing visual indication of the progress of the DNA migration. This is extremely useful because the DNA itself is not visible during the running of the gel. Visualizing the DNA after the gel has been run requires a separate step that involves staining the gel with something that binds to the DNA, rendering it visible. 
Due to the many factors that affect the rate of migration of DNA through a gel, estimating the exact length of the DNA at a particular place in the gel must be done relative to the position of the other DNA strands in that same gel. A standard, also often referred to as a DNA ladder, is placed into one of the wells. By comparing the movement of the fragments of known length in the standard with the fragments in a sample, an accurate estimate of the lengths of DNA strands in the sample can be made. The standard is treated the same way as the samples, mixed with loading dye, and added into one of the wells. With all of this material in hand, the steps required for setting up a gel are prepare the gel box by adding enough running buffer so that the gel will be completely submerged once it is placed in the gel box. The buffer does not have to be replaced every time a new gel is run, but the electrophoresis process does degrade the buffer, so it's a good practice to replace it frequently. Place the gel in the gel box, making sure the gel is completely submerged in the buffer and that the wells are oriented properly, that is closest to the negative, usually black, electrode. Add loading dye to the samples and standards. Pipette a small volume of the sample and standards into each well. And connect the power supply electrodes to either end of the gel box. With these steps complete, the gel is ready to run. Many factors influence the migration of charged particles in an electrical field. In order for DNA gel electrophoresis to work as a way to consistently separate DNA polymers based on their length, conditions are manipulated in order to create as constant an environment as possible. The factors that influence migration include the ionic composition and pH of the running buffer, the temperature of the gel, the voltage applied to the gel, and the porosity of the gel matrix. By controlling for all of these factors, gel electrophoresis can be used to reliably separate DNA strands based on their length. While the gel type, pre and post processing, and factors that influence migration vary from application to application, a solid understanding of this description of agarose gel electrophoresis of linear DNA provides the foundation upon which an understanding of the other electrophoresis techniques can be built.